probably one of the most fun things that I enjoy, and you may do this too, building antennas and go putting them up in a portable camping situation. And you don't want to haul around a bunch of stuff. Well, one of the most fun accessories for me is my pneumatic PVC air gun. That thing launches antennas up into the trees where I just can't get. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. My name is Kevin, Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey. And I love making antennas. I love portable operating and of course summits on the air. If you own one of these already, you know what I'm talking about. The power in one of these things and actually what it can do to get you up and running in your antenna project quickly. So today I'm gonna to show you how this thing works, how I use it. So here's the tree for today. This tree behind me is the one that I'm going to be uh, launching over. I'm not actually deploying an antenna today, but I'm gonna launch it over the tree to show you some of the things you run into, things you have to be concerned about when you do this sort of an operation. This tree is by no means a super massive tree, but it is high enough for this experiment because you would run into something like this out in the field. I've used this setup in plenty of mountain campgrounds where there are pine trees, 80 feet tall and more. You put enough air pressure in and man, this thing goes. If you've never used a launcher before, it's pretty fun, but you do need to assess where you're shooting. You gotta be safe and make sure you don't uh, do anything around other people that you can injure someone. Let me know in the comments down below if you've used a similar launcher or you built your own launcher to do something like this. There are so many recipes and designs that people have come up with to do this sort of a thing from super mega incredible to the simplest, easiest, lightweight portable. And there's all kinds of reasons to have different ones. So my launcher, I got the design or the idea eight years ago at least. The design is from a ham, his call sign is K8 Bravo Lima Oscar, K8 BLO. This is not a DX engineering product. I just put these cool stickers on here because, well, that's what we do. So this is made completely out of PVC, parts you can get at a hardware store or even a sprinkler store for some of the actuators that you're gonna need. I'll put a link in the description below to Charlie's website, and that'll give you ideas on how to build this sort of thing if this is the kind of launcher that you wanna build. This here is a sprinkler nozzle. It's for uh, actuating it, so you actually, this gets hooked into here, and when you pull the trigger, it's air actuated and it launches that thing. So there's no batteries or any electronics to get uh, dead batteries on when you're out in the field. And that was important to me. The rest of the parts are pressure gauge, end caps, pipes, fitting connectors, and of course, glue. You're gonna need some epoxy to get this thing uh, sealed up where this control valve is to hold the pressure in. Other than that, the small end here, it's got your fishing pole reel. This is a closed face Zebco. I didn't want an open face one. It's more, more a chance for this thing to get all tangled. It's not a high performing thing, but uh, you know, we do what we do as we're building this fun stuff. I use a couple of pipe clamps to hold onto this PVC. This is something you can build at home real easily. I use a couple of uh, tie wraps to keep this unit solid together. And that's it. Now I need to show you the projectiles. You need projectiles in your launcher. I don't use tennis balls. I need something that's not gonna get wind drag. It's gonna fly through the trees, be strong enough and heavy enough to make it where it goes, but also flexible enough to not shatter when it hits on a hard surface. Over years of practice, I've learned to pick projectiles that'll be smooth coming out of the tube, but easy to hook up and durable. These are like uh, feet you'd find on a cane something like this. I think I found this at Home Depot. These are rubber feet, so when you launch over a tree and it hits on some hard surface, it's not gonna shatter a plastic enclosure. It's gonna bounce and be safe for you to go find later. Of course, the all important orange duct tape. You know how helpful that is to have a bright colored projectile when you're out there? Well, when you land in the grass and you have a camouflaged uh, device you're looking for, you're never gonna find it. And you certainly can't see the fishing string. In a place like this where it's soft ground, the landing is gonna be relatively painless for this little device, this projectile. I can use these uh, cheap end caps. This is just standard PVC stuff that uh, you get at the hardware store. And of course, orange tape. On this particular one, I used an eyelet. This is so I can tie on or hook on the uh, fishing string to get this thing ready for launch. Now there are different projectiles for different situations. And I've learned this over time. If you need to really get it Far, far away, it has to have some weight, but it needs to be aerodynamic. 
Longer seems to be better than shorter stubbies. On the other side, if you're gonna be launching this into a parking lot where it's cement, pavement, or something like that where it's gonna land, it's gonna be coming down pretty hard and fast. I've used some of these rubber grommets attached to different plastic fittings. Your imagination is the limit to what kind of creativity you can get out of all this. Also, these shorter ones could be advantage for when you're doing a short distance. And you don't need to send this thing flying into oblivion. You just need to get it over a tree just enough so you can get it on the other side and not go crazy. All right, so now you done my projectiles. Let's get this thing hooked up and I'll go step by step what I'm going to do to get this thing launched. All right, there's a few things we're going to need. We need to make sure our string's good. What I use with my little fishing setup is a swivel. It doesn't matter what kind of swivel, but I use a swivel and it hooks on my little projectiles. And that's been working really good for a long time. You always want to double check your connections to make sure this thing doesn't uh, have a bad cut line or something or you're going to lose that thing once you launch it. So I've got three choices today and today I think I'm going to go ahead and use this one. This one fits nice and snug in the tube. It's great for landing in dirt like we're going to do today. In this particular one, I have an eyelet that I screwed in, just a simple little hardware eyelet, and uh, hook that straight into the end cap. And the swivel hooks right to it and lock that in place. We're ready to go there. So part of the fill process is the air nozzle that you installed when you built this bad boy. It's just a standard tire uh, fill valve that was glued in here initially and locked down. Hook to that and I add air pressure. Generally, I'll use 30 pounds of air if it's a really tall tree, maybe 40 pounds. It will go an awful long way. It's always good to make sure that thing's empty before you go looking down there. But I like to make sure that there's nothing in that's going to cause a backfire or cause this thing to have trouble. All right, the launcher's all loaded with air. The reel's got the projectile hook to it. If I haven't said this already, safety is your biggest concern. Make sure there's no one around you. Make sure what you're doing is safe. Make sure you're out of the way. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. If your string isn't launched right or gets hung up on the way out, this projectile can come out and hit you or someone else. So there's some things you gotta be aware of. You don't wanna just hand this off to one of your kids and let them rip. Someone could get hurt. All right, there's something else I should mention. Wind, wind is a big factor. While the projectile is gonna go flying through the air where you asked it to, it's got some resistance. And the fishing string or whatever string you're using, whatever line, that's gonna have some wind resistance. And the farther it gets, the more that wind's gonna grab a hold of it. It's the wind's gonna blow it off to another way. So you, when you're up into a tree and you're trying to hook it into a specific spot, this thing's super accurate. You can take this and launch it with, you can land it within six inches of where you need to, 80 feet up in the tree, but the wind can't be blowing. If it is, it's gonna be way hard. So there's some technique and uh, practice that goes along with using this being successful, but that's part of the fun. The more you get out and use this, the better you get at it. All right, I put you off long enough. Let's go get this thing done. Let's go take a look at this thing. We're gonna follow that. If you can see the string here, that's what we're gonna track on the other side. We're right across the very top, right where I want it. The wind is blowing a lot, so I'm not sure how it ended up. I'm not sure if you can see the reflection of the string in the tree. It's hooked on a branch there way at the top so it went over the first tree and the second tree and it's headed out here somewhere here's the string and there we go so it made it over the top of this tree the tree in front all the way back here Now that this thing's over the tree, at this point, what I would do is take this thing off and use the swivel 
hook on some pull string. This fishing line is probably 50 pound test. So it's pretty thick, but it can also break if you try to pull the antenna up through the bushes. And believe me, I've been snagged many a times. So I've learned to take smaller pull string that's stronger. This stuff's 100 pound test and haul this back over the tree. Something to note about this kind of a thing. Depending on what tree you're in and the, the terrain, everything around, what you got to pull back up through, here's just a real basic knot. Is it a good one? Eh, yeah, it'll hold, but it's not good for snags. You might spend a little extra time, tie a better knot, and even tape it. I've taped, I've, before I've taped easily, this whole thing. The swivel, the string, and the knot. So it pulls up good through the trees. There are all kinds of branches and snags as you pull at a different angle going back up through the tree. You'll get snagged on it, maybe break the line, then you gotta have, hopefully you have extra materials, extra parts, you can put it all back together. Just like you were fishing. Did you like this demonstration? Portable operations, a setup of a portable antenna. Have you thought about doing it before? You just weren't sure what it takes to do it? Well, here's one example of how you can get that done. Are you a seasoned pro and you do this stuff all the time, it's no big deal. But it is fun to do. Let me know in the comments down below. I love to hear stories about this. Setting up a tent is, I've said it before, it's probably the most fun thing there, there is to do. If you enjoy setting up ham radio and you love doing antennas, portable operations, that sort of thing, this is what I love to do and I'd love to share it. So if you like this video, smash that like button down below. It helps the channel and it helps the video. Of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing for I'll have more videos like this. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.